Hi guys, um, it's actually like past 12 and I'm about to go to sleep and I just wanted you guys to know that I filmed this video on Thursday and I intended it to be up on Friday so that's why I say Friday a lot in this video because like I'm a big procrastinator and everything but this will be uploaded on Wednesday on like on the day because it's Tuesday right now, it'll be uploaded tomorrow or today wherever you're watching it or whatever. But yeah, I say Friday a lot because I intended it to be up on Friday, but I'm a bit procrastinator, but it will be uploaded regularly at Wednesday. Sorry that it wasn't uploaded last week. It was like the longest video I ever filmed and the editing was a lot and I talk a lot, just like I'm talking right now. But yeah, I just want to, so I'm not saying like it was Friday where like I was planning on uploading it. I keep on saying that it was Friday. I want to upload it and that's why Conflict is but no. It'll be so just ignore me and everything, but just know I'm a big, a big procrastinator and I lie. So, yeah, enjoy the video. Well done, I have a plate pen right here in my little mirror. Right? Yeah. Now I'll set the video. <laughs> I'm back and it is wrestling Friday because I did not upload on Wednesday because I am a freaking dustada. The reason why I didn't upload is because I'm a big procrastinator and I actually had an idea for a video, I just never filmed it. And I thought, oh okay, if I can go home and like take a shower, wash my hair and film it and get it done and edited and uploaded, then I'm good. But then God said, you're not going to do that, and strained my, not sprained, sprained my muscle that's in my left calf. So it wasn't really, really bad, it was like, it's already gone and everything, I had like a heat pack, I took a pill, and we we're fine, so. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite women's wrestlers. Now these are my top 10, not like my, everyone overall and everything. But comment below what top 10 videos you think I should do next. Really comment. I look at the comments and everything. Don't think I don't. Actually give me more video ideas. I have a really like popular list. There's like like two girls that are from like TNA. Because like it was, I watched TNA back then. And those two are like my favorites. But the rest are from WWE. But they're like my overall favorite women's wrestlers. So let's get on with the video with my top 10 favorite women's wrestlers. Number 10, 10, 10 is Ruby Riot. Now the reason why I would say she's my favorite women's wrestler is because like she's different. Because for I think it was NXT Takeover Orlando. No, it wasn't Takeover Orlando. It was NXT Takeover Chicago, and she had a ring gear and everything. And her pants were legit. Like half of them were shorts, and the other half were just legs. And I was just like, oh my god, that's freaking amazing. Can Please get a pair. But with Ruby, she immediately came on the scene and like, you know, beat like Nikki Cross down and like, she kind of like even the numbers with Sanity. The reason why she's my favorite is because I see her as a future NXT Women's Champion and because she's different, I feel like she can connect with all the young viewers, especially like the teenagers who are like different, who are like her, like goth and punk and metal. And so you see someone like that and it's like I connect with her and I love her, she's my idol. So, She's in my top 10. Number 9 is Velvet Sky. Velvet Sky was slash is, I don't know if she is, was in TNA. She was with Angela Love called, and they made a group called The Beautiful People. I think they had other members in there, but they were like the two like leaders and like the mean girls. Like I think The Beautiful People were like, they were heel and then also face, but they were, the theme going on was like, you know, you have to be beautiful and you had to be a blonde. She was my favorite in TNA, so well she was one of my favorites in TNA. Number 8 is ODB. And ODB, I think she's still in TNA or right now it's called Impact Wrestling. And she was the like, I would say the truck driver's wife. Cause like she had showing her bras out, her boobs were everywhere, and she had a really short skirt. And so whenever she would like lift her legs or do any type of movement at all, she, her underwear would flash. But she was like, you know, she was let loose, she was herself, she always had like a flask everywhere she went. I think even like in the middle of matches she would like 
drinks like something from the flask and it was amazing. I'm just like, can you please put the flask down and fight? But the reason why, like, you know, I loved ODB is because, you know, she was herself. She let loose. She didn't care what anybody thought of her. And she knew that she was going to go out there and have fun and beat a girl's ass. And that's what everyone loved about her. Number seven is Naomi. Now, Naomi is my favorite because, well, she has the glow entrance and she's, like, unique. Like, her entrance is legit glow in the dark and you cannot help, like, just to dance to her music. Naomi's is, like... There was this thing called like Booker T thought that or believed that she was like the most athletic person on WWE roster and she was pretty athletic and she got those mic skills like she's like the reason they keep on saying snatch her ball, snatch her weave, snatch those edges. Her mic skills that are on point, her athletic ability is amazing. She's a two time SmackDown Live Women's Champion. The first time it was because of injury which was really confusing because Brock Lesnar has held on to a title for more than two months and they had like the 30 day thing where if you cannot like defend a championship between 30 days you are stripped of the title. Naomi got injured and she had to be stripped from it. Brock Lesnar is barely there with the championship. You, you barely even notice that there's a championship anymore. That's why everyone preferred like Kevin Owens or probably Finn Balor in the future. But that was like messed up because like we're already past 30 day mark with Brock Lesnar. He should be stripped of the title. And they let Naomi, they legit, they stripped the title from Naomi because she had an injury. It was like, but why though? Number six is the queen of WWE, Charlotte. Now I like to call her just Charlotte, not Charlotte Flair because she said like back then like she didn't want to get this many opportunities or like all this stuff because she was Ric Flair's daughter. Like she did not want to be mentioned, oh yeah, that's, that's Ric Flair's daughter. I'm like, no, she's Charlotte, her name's Charlotte. And they started mentioning Charlotte Flair. I was just like, can you just let her leave that own legacy? Just not involve the last thing, please. But she is like, I would say a history breaker. She became the first ever women's champion that they have brought back. She is a four-time Raw Women's Champion, probably soon be a SmackDown Live Women's Champion. She has a main event, a main event of Raw with Sasha Banks, main event of the WWE pay-per-view, became one of the first women to be part of the Hell in a Cell match. The other two was also the woman she competed against with Sasha Banks. And now at Money in the Bank, she will be part of history of participating in the first ever Women's Money in the Bank match. And thank God we are doing this because so many people saying there are rumors that there are. And I wouldn't be surprised because, you know, women are changing history in the WWE. I was getting like a little mad when I said they're going to find a number one contender. I'm like, but what happens in the Money in the Bank match? And I see all of them were just like beating each other up. I'm like, can you stop the match? This is really getting annoying. Until Shane came out and announced it, I'm like, that's what they were planning. Oh my god, they're making history again. I love it. But the one thing that I really like about Charlotte is like she's legit athletic. Like when I went to go see her for Monday Night Raw with my sister, she did like the flip that she did before going into the ring and you could like I can hear my sister saying, Okay, I can't do that. And then she went into the ring and then the split and we both said, Yeah, you can't do that and then the flip back and then said, Yeah, you can't do that either. It's like, she's like so athletic, I just like, in shock, like I just love it. Number five is the last kicker, Becky Lynch. Now in the beginning of NXT, Becky was like, you know, oh you're from Ireland, let's make you into like, you know, an Irish like girl. And so I loved it, and like, it was, she was doing like little skips and everything, and I'm like, oh she's really cute, I really like her. And I haven't seen NXT for like, oh, like a while, and so I go back and I think Sasha or Paige, I, I forgot who it was, I think it was Sasha or Paige, I don't know, but it, it must have been Sasha and she had a match against Becky and then music came, I'm like, who's this, I didn't see it, and since Becky Lynch, I'm like, she's a rocker now, oh my god, wait, she like, like, you know, reminds me like a Lita or something, and then she was part of Sasha, she was with Sasha to like, you know, beat up Charlotte, you know, she was with Sasha, she teamed up with her to beat up Bailey and Charlotte, I think it was. I think Charlotte's part of it, but I think like mostly Bailey and they renamed Team Bay. 
which was because, like, you know, Sasha's character before was, like, keeping up with the new trends and everything. Like, she had I'm Not Ratchet and, like, Boss and everything. And it was, like, kind of, like, a good thing to start with, like, you know, get her in the heel character. And then she, like, you know, went against Sasha. And she became, like, steampunk rock and that really fits her really well and then fast forward she becomes part of the divas revolution which i like to call the women's evolution and she became part of the pcb page charlotte and making history and being like you know in Slovenia and becoming the first ever smackdown live women's champion she will also be a part of the first ever women's money in the bank contract ladder match and the reason why I look her because she makes like amazing puns. Like, can we change money in the bank to money in the Becky? No? Okay. Number four is the controversial woman in the WWE. It's Paige. Now, Paige can do a lot of stupid things. And um, taste and men may be one of them. I'm not hating on Paige and everything. I love Paige with all my heart how I dressed up as Paige for Halloween last year but I don't understand like why would she think it's a good idea to go against the WWE on probably dating them? like in the beginning I was like they can't tell her who to date they always said like keep your personal life out the door we only want your professional life and they oh and they said to her um break up with Abeto or you're gonna be fired or apparently like and they had a rumor saying like she quit or something, which like I would have believed. But then she said, "Oh, I didn't quit. Like nothing's wrong. Those are just rumors." So I was like, "Oh, okay. So good. You didn't quit." And then sex tapes were released, and I would have like understand from dudes and everything. Like I don't like usually like I'm not really comfortable of like women just sending nudes. Like you really have to like do that. That's like my opinion. I don't like that's one of my morals. I will not send nudes ever in my life please no get away but if that is their personal business and they want to do it they do it don't blame them for sending them because that's their personal life that's not yours but what gives you so much entertainment to hack i'm guessing they had to hack into like their apple id in order to do all this to get all of their photos and their iCloud and like their phone numbers and everything to and hack into their social media or not even their social media they it was good to hack into social media now they're hacking just into phones now and they're putting it out into the world like what was it it was charlotte it was caitlin it was summer Rae. like what is happening like you can really find entertainment in that that you have no life whatsoever that you want attention on you so that you so the only attention that you could like you receive what is being like releasing videos and photos like what is wrong with you so with Paige it would have been okay with like news and everything on the girl made sex tapes and of course I saw them I wish I would unsee them but apparently Twitter has no bounds I don't want to get I'm really surprised how Twitter is still free now because of the, the so much savagery that we have been witnessing so of course i saw everyone has seen it and i was wondering who did she need sex with who was she with at the time until we realized that when the dude put the camera up to him to end it it was brad maddox i was like hey really brad and so much attention was on him and then you go into further and i see another dude like he said i three somewhere and it's Xavier Woods, and I'm like, oh my god. And Xavier didn't know about this because when this whole thing was happening, he was continuing tweeting and posting and everything, so he didn't know. And so someone was like, yo, apparently you news also got leaked too. Right now, Brad Maddox and Xavier Woods, back then they were the most popular, like, guys. And I can't. I really can't. They were the most popular men in WWE social media, and like, they made so so many memes, but it, it was legit crazy. Legit, when I went to Monday Night Raw, when I was going in, everyone says, we want Kane, we want Kane. I'm like, oh my god, 
and then when we went into the building and we had like the commercials there for us, and then the Total Divas in a cartoon show that involved Paige, they would scream for her, and I'm like, y'all are mad and disrespectful. What the? I think even during the women's match, like, like which one was it? I think it was between Bailey and Nia Jax. Everyone was screaming, "Want Paige?" I'm like, y'all not disrespectful. You don't want Paige. What the fuck is wrong with you? What's wrong with my city? But I support Paige no matter what, and. And she is, I feel like that she needs to take it away from Abelko because he's toxic in her life and if she ever wants to come back to WWE and just she needs to like, I would say get rid of him. I know it's not my place to say it or like try to get in between them but that's what I think. She needs to just get away from him and just like live her life. She even said that she does watch him have boyfriends so. Mm. Number three is the huggable one, Bailey. Now, I first watched NXT and I see this girl that's jumping up and down. She's, she's just excited to see everyone. She's like loving kids and hugging and high fives and just like, that's it. And I was like, I like her. So she was my favorite NXT superstar. I mean, of times that she was won for the title and lost, I was devastated and I, was like, I, didn't, I didn't like to see my fave lose. And between me and my best friend, hey best friend, um, she is Sasha and I am Bailey. So like you know, she's Sasha my Bailey. Every time Sasha does something on Twitter, I would mention her and like I would text her and everything. I was like, why'd you do that to me, bro? Or just like we're helping each other out. The one thing that really stuck was when like my best friend went into a lag event and she had the VIP experience because you know she apparently she got money like that. She met Kevin Owens, Big Show, and the Raw Women's Champion at the time. Bailey and so they had hugs and everything. I was like, oh my god, yes, yes, Claire, I love you guys. And he's like, you're gonna love me for this. I'm like, oh my god, no, it can't be a video, it can't be a video. And it is a video saying, oh, can you say hi to Bianca? And Bailey is saying hi to me. And I was like, oh my god. And the one that stood out, she's like, why aren't you here? I'm like, well, I'm in a different country at the moment. <laughs> But I love my best friend for doing that. She's the best friend of all best friends. We're probably, we're like right now playing a game on iMessage and I think we're both taking L, but watch me take the L. But my best friend is amazing for doing that. And Bailey is like, I hate it when everyone says, oh, like get this like childlike crayon or neon marker out of my TV screen. If you guys find Bailey annoying because she's a grown adult acting like a child, that was us in back then. We were annoying. We were that five-year-old that people always say, get this child away from me. So I really don't get how anyone can hate Bailey. Like, what is wrong? Like, you know about hugs? What the hell? Don't hate Bailey. Number two is the boss, Sasha Banks. Now, for Sasha, I have her theme song, Mesmerized. And not mesmerized, memorized in my head and I someone will play that at my funeral. But also play Bailey says like all my faves. Best friend y'all, you know my faves, so play all my faves at the funeral at my funeral. I remember I think it was 2015. I did oh shit. Mm -hmm. I did an entrance of like the boss and I was young and I didn't like know what her entrance was, so I did that and I thought it was awesome and everything. And so I said, hey guys, give me your like, like give me Russia things and I'll say about my opinions. I went to Sasha and I was like, Sasha Banks, I've been boss. I mean, like I love Sasha, like I love so much, like, like this please Sasha. And she liked it and commented saying, only if you do a Sasha Banks promo. And I legit, I had to look, is this actually a Sasha? And I did a Sasha promo and she liked that and she commented, she liked, she, she reposted and she followed me. That was amazing. Like I devoted my life to Sasha Banks at the moment and like, it was a, she even liked my, she even liked the videos that I did impersonating AJ Lee. I still have that. It was just Oh my god, she's like liking my like I have like I have pictures of her in my shirt and me. I think I might be cutting my Sasha Banks shirt to like a V-neck. But she was like liking almost like everything and I was like 
I was like legit, I was that girl that was always getting like, I was the top because of Sasha Banks. I was the girl that was always getting noticed by so many people. I got noticed by Charlotte, Bailey, Carmella. I tried to get Becky, I couldn't get Becky, but I know with like, with Bailey, like, he's like, oh, I love you, hugs. Huh? So, but I would like to say that like, Sasha Banks is the woman that started, I would like to say my career here. Cause like, if it wasn't for her, I would have just like, not done this like at all. I would have been like, okay, let me not do YouTube since I'm like not doing anything. I wouldn't have become like Instagram famous at the time, but I don't think I'm Instagram famous now. I'm still at 11.8K on my Nares and Shields account. But thank you. And the funniest thing in the world is that someone commented and said, Sasha doesn't follow you anymore. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? She said she doesn't follow me. I checked, she had followed me. What the hell are you doing, Sasha? But I was like, no, why she have that? But I just didn't want to see my pictures anymore, which is like totally understandable. I wouldn't want to see my pictures like that and everything. But I tried to get Sasha to follow me again, but it's not gonna work. She'll probably follow my other account. Like my the account that I'm like I'm only saying in the description below, just follow my two accounts, at Nurse and Shield, at um you lost under TV. Those are the only two accounts you guys need to follow. That's it. None of the other ones, just follow those two. So oh yeah, I would like to say Sasha Banks jump help me jumpstart my career here in YouTube and in Instagram. Thank you, Sasha, and I love you. Number one, of course, you all know it is the god herself. Where is she? Where is the thing? It is the god herself. AJ Lee. Let's tell you about AJ. Now the reason why I love AJ is because she was a great chick. She was after punk. And I love punk at the time. I still love punk. So I like was like, okay, I like this girl. Let me stick around. And I stuck around for so long until the John Cena incident where she you know, pushed her pushed him off the ladder. I was like, oh my god, what the hell? I didn't like her a little bit of the time. I legit I told my um sister in law, I was like, I said, I hate AJ Lee. And she looked at me, she's like, wait, what? You can't hate AJ Lee. And the reason why she acts as is for Christmas, she gave me that AJ Lee picture. I was like, it's okay, I, like, I love her, but she hate her, so it doesn't matter, but deep down, I still love AJ. And she was just amazing, and then Paige came and beat her for the title, and she came back, and everyone was treated for like, y'all supposed to hate her, right? What the hell? And then I was like, what? So, but either way, AJ was heel or face or whatever. I loved her and I cried when she retired like legit it was April 3rd and I came back from church at night and my brother told me through the bathroom door so are you sad that AJ Lee retired I'm like I stopped I'm like no she didn't don't even joke about that no she didn't she did not retire I was like no she didn't and I went to my phone and I see a notification saying breaking news April Jeanette Mendez, aka AJ Lee, has retired from in-ring competition. And I dropped my phone. I fell on the ground. I said, no. I ran into the room. And like I looked, I'm like, oh my gosh, she actually retired. And I was just like in shock and I was crying and everything. Like my brother actually looked at me, she's like, my brother looked at me, he's like, why the hell are you crying? I'm like, shut up, it's AJ, she retired, what the hell? And he went back to like living room, and my mom said, why'd you do that, you to cry? He's like, nothing, it's just her favorite, retired. I was crying, like, I was like, oh my god, I was really depressed, I was angry. But then later I was like, you know what, the girl's happy now, she's happy. But, it, the really, like, special moment ever is like, Rob was in Chicago in 2015. And yeah, it was in 2015, and... I tweeted out saying, since Ron's in Chicago, it was a picture of me with my AJ shirt and like, you know, going with this and everything. And like, another photo I did a side by side between me and AJ. I didn't have jeans dress at the time, so I used my short pajama shorts. And I tweeted that. The next day, my Twitter's blowing up. And it's weird because my Twitter never blows up. Like, I'm dry as hell. And I see WWE AJ Lee, her Twitter handle at the time, retweeted me. And I was like, I was shaking and everything. I was just like, oh my god. And like, I told everyone, I was like, yo, is he retweeting me? Oh my god. And she retweeted me. 
again in Halloween when I dressed as her, and then again this year when her book came out, and like, oh no, her book didn't came out, sorry, it wasn't that. It was one like, you know, Little Essentials, like the one, I have it inside the book, hold up. It was like, a little, oh, the bookmark and everything, and oh, it's in my other one. It's in my other notebook. It was like the little crazy, my super superpower thing right over there. If you, right over there in the corner, and it was the pin. I have to find a pin at the moment. But and it was like a little sticker that we put on the top of the packaging, and she retweeted me of that because my reaction was like, oh my god, like I love this so much. And in the back of my like thing, like just says crazy. It's my superpower. Mine was like weird. It's my superpower, and so she retweeted me of that and. So yeah, Agent is just like amazing. Agent, I read her book and I felt more connected with her. Like I even like I would tell you and told the world it's like I maybe related to Asia, I don't know, because like everything about about Rincon Puerto Rico and like her family and my mom did was calling me like my uncle was just like, Do we know anyone in Rab um Roberto um Roberto Mendes or what's her name? Jenna Lafavedo. And my cousin legit said, no, we might be related to AJ because our last name does a bit. I'm like, you're not related to AJ. Who the one who here looks like her? But I felt connected with AJ about everything. When I was young, I was 60 pounds just like her. I was the baby of the child. And like, I couldn't, like, I connected to her so much. And it was just like amazing. I was like, oh my god, like, I, I could be related to AJ because I'm connected to her so much. but. I'm probably not related to AJ, like, you know, I'm not, but I really felt connected with her and I really want to meet her and everything. I was supposed to meet her for her book tour. My book didn't come in on time, but they said that even my book didn't come on time, I have to purchase a book at Barnes & Noble's in order to meet her and I'm like, that's actually dumb. Why can't you just like, but if you have the book and like it came out and you have it before the tour date, you can go in with that book and have it signed instead of purchasing it there. That's actually like pretty dumb. But apparently that's the rules there in the bookstores, but we need to change it. But yeah, AJ Lee is my number one top women's wrestler. I actually believe it. I don't care if they say Nikki Bella is like the longest reigning US champion of the history. AJ Lee is the longest reigning US champion of all time. Y'all can get like salty in the comments below. I don't care. This is what I believe. Thank you guys. So much for watching this video. I'm uh, sorry this is uploaded on Friday since I'm a big, the biggest procrastinator in the world. Um, comment below what other videos I should do next, what other top 10 videos I should do next, and be salty below because what I said about AJ Lee and Nikki Bella and everything. Give this video a big, big, big thumbs up and subscribe because it doesn't love wrestling videos and tap the little bell icon next to be notified every time I upload a video. Follow only my two Instagrams because right now I'm a five because I'm a fucking menteja. But follow only my two Instagrams, Nurse and Shield and Baby Boston W. Those are the only two that I actually care about. So only follow that. Follow me on Twitter at Real Tomboy Nerd. TJ follows me and I give the dude so much crap about that. Well not even crap about that. I just give him so much crap and everything. But I can't believe he actually like still hasn't blocked me or muted me, but I give him a lot of crap, so yeah. Add me on Snapchat is Bianca underscore and Ambrose and thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys next week on Wrestling Wednesday. I promise. Bye!